The next type of wave we are studying in the ECG is the Q wave. All right, and the Q wave is uh, one of the most popular waves in the ECG because it actually forms, it actually begins the QRS complex, right? So it's quite popular. All right, so this is a Q wave. All right, so in looking at the Q wave, we are not just studying it to just know that the Q wave is on the ECG. We are trying to look how a normal Q wave will be like. They were also looking at what the abnormal Q wave, also known as a pathologic Q wave. All right. So we said that um, this is the Q wave we're studying. All right. Q wave. We check how the normal will be like and how the one that is in a disease state will be like, the characteristics, right? So for the definition, we said that Q wave in electrocardiography represent the initial negative deflection of the word QRS complex. And this indicates that there's ventricular depolarization. That's the meaning of the whole QRS complex, right? So now talking about the characteristics of the normal Q wave now. A normal Q wave, it should occur for about less than 0.04 seconds, all right? The amplitude should just be what? You know less than 1 over 3 of the R wave. Do you know why? Do you know why I say that? This is what Q R S complex, right? So now, the length of this Q wave, that's from here to here, should be lesser than U dividing R into 3. Okay? If you divide R into 3, it should still be taller than the Q wave. Okay? So if you find in places where you are dividing R into 3 and Q wave is now taller than any of the segments, there's a problem. In normal, it should be less than one third of the R wave amplitude, all right? Present, it is normally present in lead one, lead two, lead three, lead AVL, and what? V5 to V6, all right? So, um, going to the abnormal Q wave now. Once the duration is more than the 0.04 seconds that we know, there's a problem. Once you divide the R wave into three places and the Q wave is now competing in height with any of the three segments, there is a problem. All right? So present in leads where Q wave is normally not present. You know, we listed all the leads here, but there was no V1 to V4. You guys did not notice, right? So if you now see Q wave in V1 to V4, there's problem. And if you see any abnormality like this in the Q wave, it actually what represent three popular disease conditions, right? We should be looking at. It could be if there's an abnormality in the Q wave, it could mean that there's what myocardial infarction or ischemia. It could mean that there's a ventricular hypertrophy. It could mean that there's a cardiac conduction system disease or other cardiac conditions, all right? So we are not saying it's limited to these three conditions, but the most popular of the conditions that will implicate an abnormal uh, Q wave could be these three, all right? So talking about the types of abnormal Q waves, there's Q wave of infarction, where there's a persistent Q wave, usually more than 0.04 seconds, all right? And this one indicating that there's what there was a previous myocardial infarction. All right, like if you do, if you see a Q wave, then the Q wave of ischemia. This one is a transient Q wave indicating acute ischemia. Septal Q wave. This one is a small Q wave in leads V1 to V2 indicating septal infarctions and the rest. Okay, so that's it about Q wave in electrocardiography. We looked at the normal one. Always have that 0.04 seconds. Then always have it that if you divide the R wave into three, it should still be the segment should still be what bigger than Q wave. Okay, so once you have this concept by the mind, I think that's all for the Q wave.